Okay, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to service and repair the electrical connectors on your Johnson or Evernerd outboard. So, if you've never done this type of repair before, you're going to need a special crimper. This crimper is an open barrel, wide range crimp tool. This is a ratcheting type. It's available in ratcheting and non-ratcheting. So, if you're only be doing a couple, I wouldn't recommend buying a ratcheting type. You can get a non-ratcheting one for $30, where this one was $120. So, what this is going to do, it's going to take your typical open barrel terminal. So, these are the crimp wings. This is your conductor crimp wings, and this is your insulation crimp wings. Not all terminals are going to have both, but this particular one does. It's got these special jaw shaped jaws to it, and what they're going to do is they're going to take those connector wings and fold them in themselves and crimp them down. In my opinion, that's the absolute best crimp you can make. So I'm going to show you how crimps are produced. This is a crimp die. They're specific to each type of terminal you have. Terminal fits into the base, like so. This would come down, press, and crimp your terminal. So this crimp die is $5,600. Your crimp die then gets installed into this, a press applicator. The press applicator then gets installed into a press, anywhere between a 3 or a 5 ton press depending on what type of terminal you're going to be crimping. So you can buy these new, used, or you can lease them. So when they were new, these usually run between five and $20,000. So not only do you have the extreme cost of the crimp die, you then have the extreme cost of the applicator, and then you also need the three or five ton press to use this whole setup. So there is no way, shape, or form that our little hand crimper is going to do anywhere near the pressure that our die will. Because of that, we have to solder every crimp we make. This tool isn't designed for production. This tool is designed for field repairs or prototyping. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this type of work. At some point in the early 70s, you started to see these connectors start to appear. Now, these are pretty common. You'll see them on engines all the way up to the mid-90s. So you're going to need a special set of tools to work on these as well. This is your installer tool. This is your pin removal tool. And this is your socket removal tool. You can buy these from CDI Electronics or from Evinrude. These are CDI tools. They frequently give me issues, but I've also been using them for two years now, and they're still doing okay. So what I'm going to show you how to do is remove one of the pins out of this plug. Now, this plug is, I don't know, probably came out of a 74 engine, so these have been in here for a long time. So what you do... Insert the tool over one of the pins, grab it with your hand, rotate the screwdriver as you push out, and that plug will make its way out. And that's how to remove it. Just back the screwdriver back out, and there you go. Now, to put it back in, put it in the back. You're going to take this tool, position it just over there, and just Apply some pressure and wiggle it in. Get you a better angle there. And that's how that's done. Now with these connectors, there's two different types. There's the original type which has your 45 degree bend right there. This is considered a standard insertion force. There's the newer type that started, appe started appearing some point in the early 80s, and that's got a 90 degree angle right there. This is a low insertion force. You think it would be backwards the other way around, that that angle would help guide it in? No, not the case. This is a much better plug than these old things. Now, just so you know, these will not interchange. So if you're trying to take a power pack from a late 80s motor and install it into an early 80s motor, you're going to run into a plug problem. Now, luckily, you can just swap the plugs on the power pack and be okay, but it's still not going to directly fit. There's two types of terminals that they use for this. 
That is your socket. And that is your pin. Now, there is a special crimp tool to crimp those as well. I don't recommend buying it ever. It's $1,500 and it doesn't do any better of a job than this can. In fact, I believe this does a better job. I had one and I sold that thing on eBay two days after I got it. I'm going to show you how to crimp these types of terminals. This is going to be my demonstration wire. You're going to trim about a quarter of an inch off the end. Put the terminal, make sure you're going to look okay. So, as I mentioned earlier, everything must be soldered. To help the solder flow, I'm going to dip it into the flux. Now, to get this started, take a look and decide which one is probably going to be best for the size of your wire. I already know it's going to be that one. So, we're going to do position it in like so. Now, at that point, you're not going to get a wire in there, but you can give it another squeeze and it widens itself out. At that point, you're ready to install the wire. Install the wire into there. Finish it off. Remove the pin. And our crimp is done. Now what we need to do, solder it. Now you're only soldering the end of the wire. It'll flow where it needs to go. So, we have just finished our crimping and soldering, and now we can install it into a plug. So, my demonstration is a little messed up. I should have used this one to install into this, but I didn't. Just keep that in mind. Put it in, get your installer tool. Hopefully you'll be able to see this one a little better. Just like so. If you have any questions on how to do this, feel free to leave a comment. So, once it's started, you're not going to be doing it in your hand. You're going to need to find a nice hard flat surface to do this on. I usually do it up against a wall or something. So, push it in as far as it'll go. Take the screwdriver to get it out. Now, again, I used the wrong type of terminal, but that's it installed. Okay, what I want to do is talk about the stop switch for a second. Now, your stop switch may not have these ends on it, but it's a, it's a common switch used on all kinds of engines all the way up into the 80s. So, one of the struggles that a lot of people have with this switch is removing it without cutting the wires. So, I'll show you the problem they run into. The connector body can't fit through the nut. So, what you want to do is get a multi-tool, such as this. Now, this isn't the exact tool to use for these terminals. I have one, I just don't know where it is right now. So I'm going to be showing you how to do it with this. Now, I've done this thousands of times, so it may look a little easier. You may struggle with it at first, but give it a few tries. You'll get it out of there. So what you're going to do is get in the sides of the terminal here. There's two um, tabs that are going to hold this into the connector body. You're going to work the tool inside of there. Give it a little jiggle, and at some point your wire is going to come right out. Now, that will fit through the nut. Do that for the other side and you can remove and install this switch all day long without having to cut the wires. Now to put it back in, you've now just pushed in these two little um, tabs. 
So all I need to do is bend them out just a hair so they can re-engage and you'll be in business. And you're done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to crimp the terminal on the wire and to install the connector body. So I've already stripped the wires. This is down about a quarter of an inch. If you ever want to check to see if you've stripped too much or too little, you can use your terminal as a gauge. You can just put the wire into your crimp wings and see about where you are. So I'm going to be using this crimper because it'll do both crimp wings at the same time. So position your terminal and your crimper. Make it a little snug. You're going to apply flux to the wire. Just dip the end of the wire into there. You don't need very much. Insert the wire into the terminal. Look on the other side to make sure it came through okay. And give it a crimp. After you're done, just give it a quick look. Make sure you didn't crimp into the insulation into the uh, conductors, in which case I didn't, this is fine. And notice a little bend sometimes, you can just straighten that back out. So, what I use this Home Depot stir stick for is an insulator. If I was doing this in an engine or in a car or somewhere, you wouldn't want the heat transferring from the soldering gun to whatever surface you have below this. It makes a good insulator. I do this for pretty much everything I ever solder. So, for the solder, I use a lead-based solder solely because it melts quicker. You don't want to leave this on here for too long because your wire may not be able to han handle the heat of the soldering iron. So all you're doing is soldering the very tip of the wire. You don't want to do too much because solder may flow into the wire and eliminate the ability to be flexed. Now, this smoke coming up, you really don't want to breathe it in. It's pretty, the flux is pretty nasty. So until it stops smoking, just breathe away from it. So, just finished soldering that. As you can see, I just did a dab on the very end. So now we're done there. Now, ideally, you would let this cool off before you put the connector body on there. I know the connector body can handle the heat of the terminal here. So I'll just go ahead and install it. So your terminal has a little slot right there and not on the back. It'll only install this one way. So you can look on the back of your connector body and you can see that same little slot right there that's where you're going to be installing it. So all it does installs in like that and we have our end installed. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other one Soldering iron cooled down. I'll let it heat up for a second. Now what I'm doing here is just probing it, seeing if the solder's ready. My light's green on my soldering iron, so now it should be ready, but I don't always trust that light. But sure enough, worked fine. And there's our finished switch. As you can see, pretty easy to do.